This video will be particularly helpful for people who have drywall in their garage. Now, apart from having steel plates in the way for drilling my holes, uh, one of the main reasons I do a lot of drywall cutting is I needed to put in my own wood studs simply because I like to place my shelves where I would like to place them. And sometimes the studs just aren't there. You have to put in your own studs. So uh, in that case, it's not as simple a task as one would think. So once again, I hope this video will help some people out there. Here I am in my garage. I ordered three of these. I've put two up already. So there's my first shelf that I put up. As you see, I've had to do some drywall cutting to make my studs available for the way I want to insert the racks. Over on the other side, that's the second rack I put up. I will be putting up another eight foot rack and a four foot rack on the front wall there. But for now, I want to show you how I have this, uh, the bracket set like that so that I'm going to start my second two by eight here going this way. And you know what? I'm going to put an extra pulley up there to hold this. You never know. I'm going to make sure I have all the weight strength that I need for this second one. So I've made my measurements from here to the uh, center bracket. And uh, I'm about to do my drywall cutting. So here's the tool I'm going to use for my drywall cutting. I like rigid. You know, they have a lifetime warranty on batteries. I had a battery replacement on my drill tool recently, which was neat. Fortunately, I have a, a socket here close, so I don't really need an extension cord. And I'm going to come up here and uh, just cut that out, and we'll see how I'm going to put my studs in. Oh, yeah, and don't worry. I got my safety glasses on. Here we go. That's better. I'm using this tool because I want to make sure that I'm not cutting into wires or anything so I can feel it, you know. So I'm I'm doing it gently. I don't have to worry so much on these side ones because the studs, these are the middle of the studs. I like to use these couple pieces of metal to pry the uh, drywall out, like this. And some places are going to be tougher because there's screws in here, but I can't see where the screws are.
think I see one here. Yep, there's a screw. And I think one's here too, by the way it looks. Yep, there it is. That'll make it easy. Easier. There they are. Okay, let's get these screws out. Again, rigid. I like my rigid tools. Free replacement battery. All right, that ought to make it easier. Not bad. So looking at this, my bracket's gonna be somewhere in here. It's gonna be difficult to have a stud like this. So what I've done on the others is I do a cross stud and I put braces here to even solidify it. I'll show you what I mean. I put the piece of drywall back in just to make sure that I place my stud where it will be in the middle of the bracket where it's supposed to be when I drill my holes. Right there. That's where that nut's gonna go. Oh, that looks good. Just get a mark here. That looks level. Okay, so my stud needs to go this way. So I've got my piece cut and I'm gonna place it like this. So these lines will be the top of my vertical studs. I like to pre-drill my pilot holes. I like to use these specs, three inches. Yeah, yeah, Home Depot. That's what they look like. So I've got uh, one screw in. Let's get the other one in. I like to do my pilot holes. Now let's get the screw in. That's one. Now I've got a nail here. It's in the way of my stud. That's no problem. Yeah, that's gonna work. Well, so the nail is holding this. I just wanna double check. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Got these two studs in.
that's tested is uh, level. So now I'm going to put uh, nails down here into the stud. That's good. Okay, so here's a closer look. All right, that's what it looks like. And there's the line, the middle. So normally a stud is stronger going into when it's vertical, no doubt about it. But with these here, that's not going anywhere. Now, before I put my piece of drywall back, here's a little trick I do. I don't know if it's a trick or not, but it's what I do. I think it helps. I've got some all-purpose uh, drywall compound pre-mixed. I know it's gray. I couldn't find any at Home Depot that... Uh, just turns white. So, I mean, I'll put this in and it's just a simple job painting it. Um, I guess supply chain or something. So here, here's what I do, watch. I just take a little, just take a little and put it on. So that when I push my drywall in, it gets the uh, insides of it. Don't need much, just a touch. And some places with gaps could use a little more. All right, that's pretty good. Let's get our piece of drywall in. I put my drill on a low setting to put these drywall screws in. I don't like going in too fast with drywall screws. That's pretty good. Now, I'm going to use this sticky uh, tape. That's what you use for cracks in the drywall. What I like to do is I like to cut a piece and cut it down the middle. Instead of using one wide piece, I use two thinner pieces. I'll show you. But first, I like to put a little drywall. I like to put a little spackling on there. Just uh, fills a little better. The wall is textured, so I'm not going to be doing any sanding anyway. It's a garage. It didn't have to look pretty. Yeah, that's good enough. Let's let it dry and then I'll paint it. While this speckle is drying, because I've moved the uh, 
sheetrock a bit, I want to just double check uh, with my level and measurements that this bracket is going to fit in the right place. So from here to there, let me make sure it's level. Yeah, that looks good. It looks good. So this bracket is going to go here. And then I need to measure from this middle hole to the end is going to be four feet. I'll show you. Everything's fine from there to there. Okay, from the center here to the end of my bracket is going to be four feet. So I have those dotted lines there to mark where the end of that uh, bracket is going to be. And uh, I need to make studs down here and up there for the eye plate. So instead of cutting two pieces of sheetrock out, I've decided to cut this one big piece and then I can put in all the studs that I need. Here's what it looks like. It's interesting having that stud there. I say that because my studs are supposed to be every 16 inches, so they had a purpose for this extra stud. Something down, something down here, I guess. Anyway, you can see what I mean about where my studs were. And the, I got these steel plates. Those are called hurricane plates. And so uh, I didn't want to drill into them and that's why I'm doing this drywall cutting and making my own studs. Okay, so the middle of my bracket is going to be here. So I need to measure four feet out. And um, so four feet is going to be about two and a half inches in from this stud in here. So uh, I'm going to make another stud across here with the two vertical supports. And up top, I will have to make uh, another stud for the eye plate. Now I can put one hole in the eye plate up there, but I need some wood underneath that stud so that my eye plate can fit. I'll show you when I'm done before I uh, close it up with the drywall piece. I got all my studs in. So, uh, see this bottom one here. Will be good for this bracket. It'll go somewhere in here like that. So I got all that play and four feet is about here. Okay, and upstairs here. My eye plate's gonna go about there, and I'm gonna hit the middle of the stud just fine. All right, let's put the drywall back in. Got it done. Not pretty, but it's all patched up and the studs are all set properly. Uh, I'll just paint that. And while that's drying, 
I'll eventually paint that. Like I said, I'm not going to do any sanding because I'm not a here for a beauty contest. I just want to get my shelf up. Then I'll uh, start on this end, put the eye plate up there and then work across. Because of my studs, you know, you've seen that I've not started in the middle, like how they show in their video. It's different from my garage. Okay, so this is not over tightened. I have some play because I'm gonna put this bar across. I've got uh, my second eye plate there. So, um, you know, you might be thinking, why put two pull pulleys, you know, two eye plates? Well, it's just that I want it to be stronger. That's all. Sure, it might work, but I want an extra pulley. It's my garage. That's what I want. Here we go. Okay. Now here's a moment of truth. Let's get the bar up. Make sure it's level. Yeah. That's level. And it fits perfect. I think that's a good job. Yeah. Okay, so we're putting this right side brace in. Now, getting these pulleys, let's turn it this way. See if we get a picture like this. Yeah, there you go. So, we're gonna come right through here. Okay, just a little honesty here. That's not gonna work. Because the heads of these hex bolts are gonna make that funny. What I really need to do, to be honest, I need to take all this down and pass one bolt through to handle both of these, and then this will be flush. I'll show you what I mean. So we see those bolts are not long enough. They're 1.25 inches. That's the 1.25 inches. I just came back from Home Depot and these are 5 sixteenths by 2 inches. That's what it's looking like. Probably nothing the New Age Company intended, but I'll tell you what, this is strong. As long as I like it, that's what matters. So I did my measuring and I took the uh, this back bracket with a level and my bracket's gonna go here and the three inch lug screw is going to go there. Let's put it in. So I got my far left bracket in. So let's get the crossbar in. I did not over tighten it, so I have some play here to make sure my bar fits snugly. Yep, that's perfect. Got my carriage bolts in there. Let me just go ahead and tighten that up. Next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and put my eye plate up there. It's getting late, but I want to finish this. All right, the eye plate's up there. Next thing, let's get this, uh, let's get this in there with the uh, pulley system. Here we go. 
Everything's tightened up. This is what it's looking like. All the acorn night nuts are tightened. This looks good. Now you'll notice here these hex nuts. I don't use these smaller ones. I use the bigger ones that come with new age. So now it's time to put the front braces on. But uh, I'm going to put this stuff back up first. Get it out of the way. Winding down, getting close. All right, that's the front brace. Let's join that together so that we can set it across the front. Eight carriage bolts, eight acorn nuts, washers for each side. Got my tools ready to put this together. But I'm going to wait till tomorrow morning because at Home Depot, I got four carriage bolts. They're too long. I got to cut them. So I'm quitting for tonight. I'll cut those in the morning. So here I am early next morning, ready to cut my carriage bolts. Like I said, at Home Depot, I couldn't get any this size. So I got my black magic marker and my trusty Dremel tool. So I think this with a pair of pliers holding the carriage bolts, I'll get them cut. Well, that was pretty easy. Three more to go. Just in case anyone's curious. That's how I do it. Just hold it like that and cut it. Either way, sparks do get flying, so I do wear my safety glasses. So there's my custom cut carriage bolts. Those are the pieces. A little gentle filing. To finish it up, I want to say just a little extra about these uh, safety glasses. Not only are, are sparks flying, but little pieces of uh, metal and shrapnel get flying around. I mean, it might be better, you know, using a vice, but I just was in the mood for just using vice grips, doing it by hand. Pretty easy. So my custom cut bolts are They've cooled down, now I can handle them. Time to put this front piece together so that it can go there, yeah. So I've got all my carriage bolts in, six horizontal, two vertical. They're a little loose because um, it's going to be a little easier for me to tighten them when I get this bar up but it's tight enough to uh, get the bar up. Um, so remember that you need the acorn nuts on the outside. There, I was able to get that up pretty easily. Yep, did, did it myself. Acorn nuts on the outside. One washer here, no washer on the other side, like that, and my two vertical ones. So I was able to attach one side and uh, get this other side in, actually without the need of... Uh, without the need of using my rubber hammer. They just slipped in pretty good. Hoo-wee, I'm getting happy here. Look at that, nice and level. All the uh, carriage bolts tightened nicely. Next step is to get these middle support beams that'll go in this area. And we're close to done. Yes, siree, I'm getting happy. Here's the way this is gonna go in. 
you've got uh, one hex bolt going down, no washer, and a hex nut. And then these other four hex bolts are going to be coming up with a washer on each side and a hex bolt. Here we go. So this is what it looks like before I tighten my bolts and washers. Here's the center one, no washer, bolt going down, hex nut on the bottom, and the others in reverse, but with two washers. Hex nut going up, washer, bolt with a washer. And all four are like that. So let's tighten these things up. Let's tighten them up. So I use these two tools and this is how I tighten these bolts. And you just get them snug, but not too tight. Here's the final part, getting these racks and new braces in. Set them in here. Yep, yep. So you'll notice the end one looks like that. That's how it goes. And of course the other one in the end looks like that. Whereas the normal ones look like that. So let's get them up. Just want to show you something here. Some of these get especially in the middle, they get tricky. So the way to get this in is to get the U-bar sideways like that. Work it in there sideways and then twist it up. See, like that. And then you can get it in. Otherwise, these nuts in the way and everything makes it difficult. So that's how you do that. And the other one in the center is a little tough. I like to get it in like this. And then uh, it's just over the bar a little bit. And I just pull this bar out a little bit and it'll slip down. Okay, you just get it like that. And then just uh, pull it down. Just one more time. The easiest way I like to get these in is like I say, turn these U-bars sideways and then twist them. And pretty easy like that. So getting in this last rack is a little tricky. What you wanna do is come in at an angle like this and get this part in first, and then work this corner under these nuts and this piece here angle it in and then it'll slip in just fine i like it i really like these shelves yes i do well job finished put stuff up there so here's one more look at it it's the right side of my garage there I put it up there stuff up there and on the other side one more time there it is now I said I was going to put a, another eight foot and a four foot um, shelf new age shelf I'm not sure I might just organize that in a different way 
and uh, I'll think it through. <laughs>